Hi folks, Doral Dykes here. Welcome to my Sunday String Along. And uh, I just want to say a special Happy Father's Day to all you guys. Uh, of course, uh, recently I was in Hawaii. I brought my Hawaiian shirt, but I'm not in Hawaii today for Father's Day like I was Mother's Day. But uh, it's really great to be home, to be honest with you. And I uh, have my old Martin guitar. I have three of them here. I never did change strings on them. But they're GHS, what can I say? <laughs> Dad loved the song. why you wait here and uh there <laughs> there's uh, a lot of songs that i can say that dad loved but if he picked up a guitar that was normally the first song that he would play i mean he he loved uh chet atkins merle travis all that stuff and uh of course les paul <laughs> so many things about my dad i remember and he had an old gold top, Les Paul, and uh, he and Mom would uh, we'd get up in church and they'd announce uh, the you know the the singing Dykes family, and we would get up and sing. And Aubrey and I, and my brother, uh, he's two years older than me. It's just the two of us, and uh, they'd put us up in an old, uh, normally an old uh, folding metal folding chair, and we each had our own little chair. And then Dad would be over on this side, and Mom would be over here, and we'd sing. You know, feeling mighty fine. <laughs> and Dad would play it in the style of, uh, of Les Paul. And then when uh, Barry Lackey, the sailor, a lot of you've heard me talk about Barry Lackey. If you'll go to Sweetwater um, and just look up the finger-picking uh, uh, lesson by Doyle Dykes uh, and Barry Lackey, Barry the sailor, it'll, it'll show what he showed me that day. And uh, I learned how to finger-pick from uh, this sailor that came to our church. And then about a year after I was into it, uh, dad asked me, he said, son, could you show me what that sailor showed you? And from then on, he was a thumber until the day that he died. He <laughs> My daddy was a preacher in a little country place. He preached the word of God throughout his days. He often spoke of heaven and seeing Jesus' face. I remember when my daddy used 
used to say In heaven there's a city The streets of purest gold The mansions as far as you can see Just outside that city God made a place in heaven for country folks like me. Someday I'll see my daddy in that better land. We'll sing the praise of God for eternity. But just to see the face of Jesus, feel his nail prints in his hand. That will be worth everything to me. In heaven there's a city, the streets of purest gold, the mansions as far as you can see. Just outside that city, in the hills beyond, God in heaven country folks like me Oh God made a place in heaven for country folks like me <laughs> Dad never was a preacher exactly but he was a guitar player and uh, he loved music loved guitars I mean and uh, just talk about my dad a little bit if you don't mind it's Father's Day and, and uh, here's a here's a photo a couple of photos here I just show you my dad and uh, I had a great relationship with dad and this is one I keep in my studio all the time and I just thought it was a nice nice photo of dad and uh, boy, he just loved guitars. And uh, he was like me, he was guitar rich, <laughs> guitar poor. And uh, and here's dad and I playing together. And uh, this is at the Chet Atkins Appreciation Society convention. And boy, he just loved to play. And I loved getting him up there and he could play. He could play really well. And here's dad and Chet Atkins together. And I'm sure, I mean, dad had several of these in this uh, folder thing. and. He was proud of that one, and uh, he loved Chet. We all did. And uh, but Dad was uh, very, very special to me. People said, "Did your dad show you how to play?" Well, he he definitely did. He got me into playing chords, and uh, I never did get into the scales and all that kind of. Of course, I found out later from Sonny Thomas, one of my guitar picking buddies that passed on. But he said, "There's a well, Dole. There's a scale for every chord." And I didn't really realize that, but that's the way I learned to play. Now that was a night. This was a 1940 D45 that I inherited. This is a 1960 D18. Let's see what it sounds like.
1960. Got this from uh, Kelly Barber uh, over in uh, Action Sound. This is mahogany sides and back, and for you guitar guys out there. And uh, this one has the pearl. They only did this a uh, very short time, I understand. The, the pearl buttons on the, uh, the Grover tuners, aren't they beautiful? And uh, I think they're really cool. And uh, so this is a 1960. And, and then, of course, this one here being a, a D45, it has the, and, and of course, this has been played a lot. And Roy Clark had this for 30 years. I gave it to him, and it came back. And, um, and, and out of the generosity of his wife, Barbara, uh, when uh, Roy passed away, I had given it to him. Uh, years ago and the Lord spoke to me to give the biggest thing I had away and uh, there's a lot of history in this guitar my uncle Doyle had it and uh, he never had any kids but my brother and I were kind of like his you know he kind of claimed us but because I was a guitar player he left this to me and uh, even though it was a hard thing to do I really felt like God spoke to my heart to give it away and I got it back and uh, so you say, it was less like the prodigal son, the prodigal guitar. <laughs> well, maybe could be, could be. And uh, speaking of uh, prodigal guitar, I got the new uh, uh, vintage guitar magazine. And you'll all, you all always have to see part of my head on these things. So here's the top of my head. And uh, I love what they did here. Of course, they, they call this the prodigal, the prodigal burst. And it has uh, Joe Walsh's uh, uh, burst here of course the guys over at vintage are really great friends of mine and and of course i i, I hear from willie mosley every week and uh and he's one of the most amazing writers and he's done articles on me did an article on this guitar and vintage guitar but uh but i especially love what they did with the uh, the the uh, the, pit, the photos of, of the dads and their kids playing guitar. And, and so it's not just my dad and myself. There are a lot of fathers uh, that love to play and play guitar and pass it on down to their kids. And it's so cool. And a lot of them are bragging, the bragging on their kids here. And you can see this guy here, this one here. Uh, and he's, he was saying here, uh, whenever possible, Gordon Hammond jams with his son Straight and Marshall, he's a very accomplished guitarist, and I am very proud of him, says Dad. And uh, and then you down here on the bottom, you got you have a whole family of guitar players, and uh, I just think it's such a cool thing, and uh, and I love that. And uh, and then there are more photos in here of families, and uh, it's just it's just so cool. I mean, there's two more. Look at there, four more pages there, and. Uh, such a neat thing. I love that. And uh, the, how they honored fathers, and not only that, but families that play together, family that prays together, stays together. Well, you can kind of say that a family that plays together, uh, not on the spiritual side of it, but there could be. Uh, I wrote a song years ago that my son and I recorded, Caleb, and uh, called Bridging the Gap. And I've always said that... that uh, Music always just kind of helped bring us together, and it still does. We talk, talked about guitars last night. Of course, he lives in Hawaii now, and that's where I was at his place when I did the Mother's Day uh, string along. But, uh, boy, I miss Caleb. But we have three daughters, too, Heidi, Holly, and Haley, and, uh, and they all love to play and sing. And, uh, of course, Haley is a worship leader at her Baptist church, Holly has written a lot of great songs. She's a, a teacher uh, and a language teacher. And then Heidi's a nurse anesthetist. And of course, Heidi has a white rose for Heidi guitar. And she's traveled also the world with me. They all have. And, uh, and so I'm very proud of my kids. I'm a, a proud father and now grandfather of five uh, grandkids. And so anyway, uh, uh, talking about uh, Joe Walsh's guitar a little bit, this was the guitar. He had two burst guitars, and uh, one of the 59s he gave, uh, of course, when Led Zeppelin uh, was, was in the States in 1969, and Jimmy Page just loved his guitar. 
he had a custom, a 1960 custom, and Joe Walsh gave him one of his 59s, and he kept the, the one that fit, fit him the best, and he said, Paige just really loved the other one, and so he kept this guitar, and through the years, he sold it, I think, over a quarter of a million dollars. Anyway, the guitar came back on the market, and uh, there's uh, Willie's Guitars up in uh, Minnesota. I've been up there, and uh, just find Nate, all those guys, really fine folks up there, and he helped him uh, to get his guitar back. So they call this issue the Prodigal Guitar. And so I don't think there's a better uh, subject to talk about uh, for Father's Day than, than the Prodigal. Now, I, I want to say, people say, well, I believe in God. Well, that's great. But do you know God? The people that know God, the, the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits, the Bible says. But knowing God is a thing. Well, I believe in Jesus, but do you know him? Do you know Christ? Well, how do I get to know him? Well, for one thing, you, you surrender your life to the Lord. And then, uh, in a, in a, and he said, well, I've done that, but how do you really know God? I, you know, one of the greatest compliments I've, I've ever had, I, you know, I've had people have, that have had me at their churches, and I, I've had some of, the, uh, some of these pastors, and sometimes that'd be maybe a, a, a big church, maybe a famous pastor, or maybe a smaller church. And, uh, but they, uh, one of the greatest things that's ever been said to me is that, you know, I can tell Doyle really loves the Lord. That's a great compliment. I thought, you don't know how much I appreciate that. Because I do. I really love the Lord. I, 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 but how do you get to love the Lord and know God? Well, you spend time with him. You talk to him. You know, if, if the Bible says if we can identify with Christ and, and we say that we're one of his, that we should also, and this is in 1 John, we should also walk even as he walked. That's 1 John 2 and 6. If, that, if we say that we abide in him, we should walk also as he walked. And uh, you know, it, that's the true walk of life. <laughs> oh man, the true walk of life. Let's see. I, I, play, I played that on this. This is a tune. I, I love this guitar. It's a 19. I wasn't going to do this, but I will. 1955, which I was one year old when this was made. FC, FC, FC.
<laughs> oh man, well I messed up really good there, but uh, I uh, I had a good time. 1955. Uh, this is a guitar show too, by the way. String along. 1955. I was one year old and uh, got that from Kelly Barber as well. And uh, boy, I love these straps too. I got this from Alfonso Leather, Alfonso of Hollywood. And uh, it's a really unique design. And I said, did you come up with that design? He said, no, my father did. And I always loved it. If, if, if he did it, if he did it, he'll say he did it. But, uh, but uh, uh, his father started a business and he, every time I'm with, um, every time, his name is Omar Pineda. Uh, it's Alfonso's son. Just go to Alfonso Hollywood. And uh, he always gives credit to his father. He always does. You know, God honors that. If we say that we abide in him, we should also walk as he walked. Jesus uh, taught us how to pray when his disciples said, well, teach us to pray. And there was one in particular also that went back to him and said, can you show me how to pray? And Jesus said, our father, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And you know the Lord's prayer, but there's a connection there. It's, it's the most powerful prayer uh ever told uh, in the world, ever prayed. And I pray this prayer every single day. And uh, I'll be talking about it more. I don't have time for everything today, but I'll be talking about how uh, I say the Lord's Prayer and how I use it every day in, in next week's String Along. Um, I talked to Father John, who is uh, also Fred Gretsch's uh, priest, and I asked him their perspective uh, the Catholic perspective on the Lord's Prayer is, uh, do they use it as a penance? How do they use that? And then, and of course, he said exactly what I figured he would. It's such a powerful prayer. No, it's much more. It's much, much more than that. And so I'll be talking about that uh, next week. But if you really want to get to know God, how do I get to know Jesus? How do I get to know the Father? You, you talk to him. Now, you'll never get to know anybody unless you talk to him. You know, I, I heard Charles Neiman years ago, one of my uh, favorite past, or preachers and a pastor down in El Paso, Texas. Um, even though I've never played at his church, but I've always admired him, and he was a great speaker. Years ago, he preached on something, and he said he was, he was actually counseling this couple. And they came in, and immediately the lady, the woman, the wife, she just started crying. And he said, well, what's, what's the problem? He's just, he never tells me he loves me anymore. And he looked at the man, and he, he just kind of old country boy, you know, he's sitting there, and he said, is that, is that true, sir? He said, well, I reckon. He says, you know, I told her that the night I married her. If I change my mind, I'll let her know. <laughs> so he said, well, let me ask you, sir. He said, do you have a dog? And he said, yeah, I have a dog. He said, do you ever pat that dog on the head? He said, yeah. He said, do you pat him on the head pretty much every day? He said, yeah. He said, well, that's, that's communication, see. He said, sir, my opinion, yeah, I think you're treating your dog better than you are your wife. And and uh, he just bowed his head down. He says, yeah, well, I, I suppose you're right. He said, well, honey, you know I love you. And boy, it just changed everything. When he looked at her and he started talking, he said, you know, I love you. And, you know, uh, praying continually. In fact, the Bible tells us to do that. And there are a number of verses that do. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, in the message, be careful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God in everything no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you to live your life. He said he's the way, he, he, the way God wants you who belong to God to live. And uh, Romans 12 and 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, being continual in prayer, continuing instant in prayer. Another translation is, says it constant in prayer. Jesus said this one time in, in uh, John chapter 10. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And that word, there's a no, a no actually means to confess or to speak. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. That means the printing press hasn't been turned off with the Bible. He still speaks to us. And if we can talk to him, 
He'll speak back to you. You know, you might say, well, how does he do that? Well, in a number of ways. I was I was out praying the other day, and God spoke to me to just contact this this famous guitar player and just tell him, I'm praying for you for something today. And and uh, and his wife contacted me back and said, Doyle, he was having a hard day. You have no idea how, what that meant to him. And God just put him in my spirit, you know. And one day I was out in the backyard, and God spoke to me, tell Ricky Skaggs that you love him. Now, well, Ricky knows I love him, but I don't want to bother Ricky. But he said, and it was like an urgency. And when I did, Ricky contacted me right back and said, Doyle, I love you, brother. You're a blessing. What are you doing so-and-so? And it was during the pandemic, and he asked me to play at the Ryman Auditorium with him. You know, and it was just one of those things. God was setting me up. And so, uh, you know, I I can tell you so many times, it happens to me all the time. And I, and I spoke to a friend of mine yesterday. I'm praying that you guys are just going to have a great weekend and the Lord will bless your heart and bless your lives. He was a, a famous pop star. And he said, Doyle, we're at in, uh, Carmel or someplace, you know, and he said, uh, uh, we're taking this weekend off and we've had a rough time. His, his wife has cancer. And he said, you know, uh, God has just given us a healing and it just seems to be bringing things together. Thank you so much for your prayers. So when you talk to God, he'll talk to you. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. That word means can speak. I know them. I can speak to them. And so God will speak back to you. Jesus likes to converse. He wants to get to know you. You know, it's not just knowing about God. I believe in God, but do you know him? Do you know the Lord? Do you know Jesus? Do you know the Father? Like Jesus said, if you know me, you know the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He wants you to get to know the Father. So he taught us to pray to the Father. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. That's the way you do it. And so according to him. And so I'll take his word for that. I remember one time talking about, let's get back to the prodigal real quick. And I'll let, I don't want to keep you all day, but uh, in Luke chapter 15, uh, I won't go through reading this whole thing, but uh, in the beginning of that, Jesus was uh, eating with, uh, you know, with sinners, and he was ridiculed for it. And then he t- he went and told them a parable of the lost coin, and that just go to uh, Luke chapter fifteen and and read that just from the very beginning. Read that he talked about the lost sheep, and then he talked about the lost coin. Actually, I think in that order. And, uh, you know, he, he would go, he would leave the, the 90 and nine. And if he had a hundred sheep and he'd go after that one, he'd just go after that one. And, uh, and it meant so much to him. And the woman that lost the coin, of course, when she found the coin, she called all of her friends. I found it. And, and you think about how God is with one of us. And there was a man that had two sons. And they call this the prodigal son. I'm going to change it around. Who's the prodigal here? You see, because we have such a loving heavenly father that wants to bless your life and lavish upon you with with blessings in your life. You have no idea how much, I don't think any of us do, really how much God loves us. I'm not talking about just you. I'm talking about me, all of us. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his his strength and his, but his blessings you know, the, the, the Bible said the blessings of the Lord, he maketh rich and he has no sorrow to it. He wants to bless your life. So the prodigal's son, P-R-O-D-I-G-A-L apostrophe S, the prodigal's son. We all look at it as the prodigal son. And I get that. I mean, it's talking about the son said, I want, I, I want you to go ahead and give me my inheritance, which meant the dad had to take a third of everything he had and his brother, and they divided it all, and he went ahead and gave it to him, and in no time he spent all that he had on riotous living, which whatever that means, I saw one translation that says that it was like wine, women, and song. And, uh, and so he spent all, he just wasted it, he spent extravagant amounts of money, and he just wasted all that he had until he had nothing else. And uh, of course, his brother, he, and he was the youngest son of all the sons. He was the least likely to say, I want what does, belongs to me now. And, uh, and so his father gave it to him. And it had to be an enormous amount of money because his father was wealthy. And uh, when he came back, he said, if, you know, I could be like, 
I just, I'll just go home. If I could be, I'm starving to death. If I could just be like one of my father's servants, or he, I'd even eat the, the hog slot from his hogs, but nobody would even give him that. No one would give him anything. So he went back home, and the Bible talks about when the father saw him in the distance, he ran to him, and he kissed him on the neck, and he told him, told the servants, kill the fatted calf. My son, who was lost, is now found. And, he, and they had a big party for it. And of course, his brother, uh, he got very angry about it. He says, you know, I've been with you. I've been faithful to you. And he says, you, you go and kill the fatted calf, which was, I mean, if you're, you, won't, you didn't throw a party unless you killed the fatted calf. And when he killed the fatted calf, I mean, that, that's an extravagant thing. And he said, look what you've done for him. And he said, son, all that I have is yours. He said, but your son was lost, but now he's found. Like the song says, I, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. Thank God. Thank God for a, a heavenly father. But it was the father that spent all this money. He was as extravagant as his son because he was rejoicing that his son came home. You know, it's an amazing thing here that, that Joe Walsh, it wasn't the prodigal guitar. It was, it was the prodigal. It, Joe Walsh was the prodigal. He spent an enormous amount of money to get that guitar back because he loved it so much. You know, this, uh, you, somebody said, well, it might have been a prodigal guitar. Well, in a sense, the prodigal, in this case, was Barbara. It, it was actually Roy Clark's wife that had the generosity to knowing that that was a valuable guitar to give it back to me. You see, that's the way God is. If you, if you really look at the word uh, prodigal, it means generous. One who spends and gives lavishly and foolishly, if it even, it even says, uh, is uh, characterized by uh, profuse or uh, wasteful expenditure. Um, a, a sentence goes like this. I got out of the dictionary. The, the dessert was crunchy with brown sugar and a prodigal of whipped cream. An enormous amount of whipped cream. Generous. You see, the Bible talks about it in John chapter 17, verse 4. I brought glory here on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. You see, that's what Jesus said before he died. He said, Lord, I've completed what you've told me to do. You know, the, the first, and he was talking to his father. He says, I've completed, Father, the work that you've given me to do. You know, the first words that was ever recorded by Christ was when he was just a boy. And he said, don't you know that I was about my father's business? He said, why do you seek me? Don't, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? And those, that's the words of Christ. And so from that time until the very end of his life, and he says, when I've finished, he says, all the things that I've done, I brought glory here on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. I hope we can all say that. And let's get to know the Father better and realize that he loves us so much. And he's the one that has given, Jesus is the one that gave his life for you. You know, and for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me play, I don't call it the prodigal guitar. This is a blessed guitar, a blessing guitar. Let's see.
has saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Let me pray with you. Father God, thank you for your love. Thank you for showing us the love of a heavenly father today, that you would lavish upon us with blessings. And Lord, that you love us so much that when one comes to you, Lord, that you would run to him. Lord, you're running to someone today. And I just thank you, Lord, that there's someone here today, Lord, that will say, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I want to get to know you. I believe in you. I believe you lived. I believe you died, but I want to know you. I want to serve you. Come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I accept you, Lord, as you accept me today, and I know you are in Jesus' name. And Father, also, I pray that you will bless and Lord, and just speak, Lord, to us today in a very, very special way. Touch someone today that perhaps didn't have a good earthly father and just let them know and just Holy Spirit, just even be with them today and reveal Christ to them and let them feel a sense of your love and your spirit right where they are right now, right now. In Jesus' name, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. And we thank you and we praise you for all the things that you've done for us. Thank you for the gift of music. Thank you for these old guitars. Thank you, Lord, for direction and protection. Thank you for healing. Thank you for provision. I thank you, Lord, when I go get gas, it might be expensive, but Lord, I thank you for the, and I bless the gas like I bless the food at the table. Thank you for, for uh, giving us what we need in our daily bread because you are our heavenly father. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, for you are the prodigal father. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, folks. That well, might be a little bit different today, but I love that part. Jesus said, don't you know I'm about my father's business? The first words he ever said, and then the last thing before before he was taken up, you know, and uh, actually before he was arrested, the last thing he told the father, Lord, I've completed the work that you gave me to do. Lord, help us to do the same thing in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thanks for joining me on my Sunday string along and happy Father's Day.